How's it going, folks? I'm Des with DesFit, and this is the Tax Boost Indoor Bike Trainer. It's a wheel-on basic bike trainer that can offer 1,050 watts of resistance. It doesn't require any power at all. It's relatively quiet, and it also comes with a front wheel riser block. With the Boost, Tax is aiming to consolidate their basic bike trainer line, and rather than offer numerous different models, they're just going to offer the Boost. So the Boost is in essence exactly the same as the previous Boost Ur model, but they drop two letters from the name, and it has a new paint scheme. And there's two ways you can purchase the Boost. You can get just the Boost itself for $299, or it also comes with a bundle option for $329 that includes a speed sensor. If you do use a speed sensor with the Boost, you'll be able to collect speed and distance with a compatible watch or bike computer, and then you can also hook it up with online cycling training platforms like Zwift, Trainer Road, Tax Cycling, and some other platforms that will definitely help pass the time while training indoors. The 1050 watts of magnetic resistance is controlled by a lever that lives on your handlebars, which has 10 different positions. It has a 3.6 pound flywheel, but Tax advertises that it has a simulated flywheel effect of 20.2 pounds. In general, the heavier the flywheel, the more realistic the ride feel will be in terms of simulating outdoor riding, and we'll get into how the Boost rides here in just a little bit. But in this video, we're going to go through how to set up the Boost, we're going to go through how it rides, how loud it is, as well as how to get up and running on Zwift. So with some bike trainers, assembly can be a somewhat daunting task, but the Boost is actually pretty fast to get set up and should only take about 10 to 15 minutes to get riding. So to get started, just slide out the trainer along with the rest of the parts from the main box. It may look like a lot of parts here, but it's actually pretty simple. Inside the box, there's the main trainer unit or the frame itself, and you'll notice that it's foldable, so you'll be able to store the Boost and closet when you're not riding. There's also the resistance unit with the resistance control already attached. You have the instructions and included quick release for standard quick release axles, but the Boost is compatible with other axles with adapters that you can purchase separately, a piece to attach the resistance unit to the frame, along with two Allen bolts, as well as an Allen key, some rubber spacers, and a front wheel riser block. And you won't need any additional tools to set up the Boost. It has everything inside the box that you'll need, other than maybe a vacuum to clean up some of the styrofoam bits that will come out of the box. The first thing you'll want to do is unfold the frame and place it on a level surface. From here, you're going to attach the resistance unit. There are three positions for the resistance unit based on your wheel diameter. So those positions we saw on the resistance unit align with the notches on the main frame, and you'll also notice the same sort of notches on the piece that attaches to the resistance unit. You'll just use the included Allen key to secure the unit onto the main frame with the two Allen bolts. And I may have made that sound more complicated than it really is, but I assure you it's really simple. So now all we have to do is get the bike mounted onto the trainer and attach the resistance control. So to attach your bike, the first thing you'll want to do is use the included quick release if you have a bike with a standard quick release axle. Tax does sell through axle adapters for lots of different types of axles if your bike happens to have one of those. You'll first insert the drive side of the rear wheel into the trainer and then get the left side aligned. From here, simply rotate the lever on the trainer to lock it in place. You'll want to check to see how secure your bike is. It needs to be securely in place and if you do find it has some play, just simply rotate the knob on the drive side until it's nice and stable. So now we need to adjust the resistance unit to get the optimal contact with the tire. So when the lever is up, the tire shouldn't be touching the trainer. And then when you push the lever down, the trainer should make a secure contact to the tire. You don't need to have a massive amount of pressure with the point of contact, but it does need to have a consistent and secure contact with your tire all the way around. And you can adjust this with the knob at the bottom. Oh, and you'll also want to make sure that your tire is fully inflated. So in my case, I was using a 700C tire, so I had it to about a, like 100 and 110 PSI. But go ahead and check your tire for the maximum recommended pressure. And now all we have to do is place the included front riser block underneath the front tire and then attach the resistance control to your handlebars. And you'll use one of those rubber spacers depending on the diameter of your handlebars. In terms of how the Boost rides, it provides a nice ride feel for being a wheel-on bike trainer with a 3.6 pound flywheel. It spins up with a natural feel and it's able to maintain a speed nicely once you're rolling and I don't know, I quite like the road feel. Road feel is kind of a hard thing to measure other than my own perception based on my experience with other bike trainers, but I think the boost is pretty good. Now, sound can be an issue with basic bike trainers and this mainly has to do with the fact that the interface from the tire to the trainer can be loud and if the trainer itself is loud, then that's not good. But with the boost, there's really not much sound that comes out of the trainer itself. Again, it mainly has to do with the contact of the tire to the trainer. The noise will be fairly quiet at a normal pace, but the noise does increase as your wheel speed increases. There can also be a little bit more vibration at some higher speeds. And if you do happen to experience a lot of vibration, you should probably also check your tire to make sure that's perfectly seated on your rim and it's uniform all the way around. 
For someone living in an apartment, it should be perfectly fine in terms of noise levels for most workouts. Now, if you're doing a really high intensity workout where your wheel speed is really high, your neighbors may hear it, so just keep that in mind. And to wrap things up, let's also talk about how to get the Boost up and running on Zwift. So you will need a speed sensor for this. So you can either purchase the Boost bundle that has the speed sensor included, or you can purchase the speed sensor separately. It's a really cheap and easy way to get up and running on Zwift, but there's just a few little caveats. You'll first attach the speed sensor to your rear hub. From there, you'll fire up Zwift on a tablet like an iPad, your Apple TV, and you can even use a phone or a computer. So after you create your account, you'll be prompted to pair either a power source or a speed sensor. You'll want to choose the speed sensor. If your speed sensor doesn't appear for some reason, you may have to spin up your rear wheel to get it to wake up, then choose the sensor. Zwift will then ask you to choose a trainer. Since I was testing this before the Boost was actually publicly available, I chose the Booster since it's basically the exact same trainer. It prompts you to place the resistance lever in position two based on this trainer. And we'll circle back to this here in just one second. And then you can also hook up a cadence sensor at the same time if you have one of those as well as a heart rate sensor. And that's basically it, we're ready to ride. You can choose whatever course you'd like and then you can get rolling. I like Zwift because it provides a great way to pass the time training indoors by trying to immerse you into a virtual world where tons of other real people are also riding from all around the world. It's a great tool that's taken indoor cycling to kind of another level. Now with basic bike trainers versus smart bike trainers, the power number that you see up here in the upper left hand corner is virtual power. It's merely an estimation of power output since basic bike trainers don't provide an actual power measurement like a smart bike trainer or a separate power meter like power meter pedals. That means that this number that you see up here is based on just your wheel speed. In terms of how the virtual power compares to a real power meter, here's a chart of the virtual power that was being collected by Zwift compared to a pair of Garmin Vector 3 pedals as well as another crank-based power meter. If we recall back when we launched Zwift and we chose the booster trainer, it said to use resistance level 2. That's where I had the trainer for the first 10 minutes, and as you can see, it was reporting a virtual number that's a bit higher than the power collected from the actual power meters. But at the 10 minute mark, I switched it to resistance level three. And although the virtual power number is slightly lower, it's much closer. Where you'll find the virtual power wanders more is going to be on sudden increases in power, such as these two sprints right here, where it didn't report as high an output as the actual power meters. But in steady state situations, the virtual power number isn't way out there. It somewhat resembles actual power, but it obviously won't be perfectly accurate since it's just an estimation based on a speed sensor. You could probably use either resistance level two or resistance level three, but for my particular riding style, I found that resistance level three more closely matched the power that was coming out of my actual power meters. Even so, I'm kind of impressed with what Zwift did in terms of estimating that virtual power number. Overall, I really quite like the Boost. It was easy to assemble, it's nice and durable and very stable, it rides well, I mean, it does what it's supposed to do. The price is a little bit interesting though because for just 70 bucks more you could get into the Tax Flow Smart Trainer. And considering the fact that Tax was consolidating their basic bike trainer lineup and only offering one option, I was hoping to see the price be just a smidge lower. But I guess it is what it is. And being 2020, it's kind of hard to get any trainer in general, so I guess there's that to consider. Anyhow, that's the in-depth look of the Tax Boost Bike Trainer. And if this video did help you out at all, don't be shy about hitting that like button down below and also subscribe to the channel for plenty more sports tech videos that are coming soon. In the meantime, happy riding and we will see you in the next video.